up, everybody? Woo. Ooh, these mics are hot today. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm so excited. This is my third show. What can I say? Welcome to The Hustle. Yes, where we cover everything about your hustle. Yeah, and everything in between. So uh, today's show is really going to be good. But before I get to the show, there's something I just have to do. And that is um, happy birthday to MLK. And that's something that I will always do, even if it's a day late, because I only come on air on Tuesday. So I definitely want to give him a shout out uh, and to preserve his legacy in any way that I possibly can. Uh, in keeping in line with his vision, keeping his vision alive, uh, his beloved nation. Remember, that's one of his inspirations is the beloved nation uh, and uh, where race is not an issue. Uh, people are equal. Uh, minorities have voices, racial equality, nonviolence um, in our protests, uh, social justice, not social injustices. Um, and, you know, as we keep him in mind, he's, his vision changed the world. And, you know, hey, if I can do a little part of my own to remind us of this great man and his vision, then I do so now. And that is to wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday. And to honor you, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., your message may have started out on deaf ears but it's not uh, on deaf ears anymore. Unheard. And we're, yes, but it's not unheard. Thank you, Melba, that's so good. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, I definitely want to bring in my guest. A lot of people are expecting me to dance. Yes, um, unfortunately, you know, I still got my, ah, still got my shoe on. <laughs> so I'm not dancing today, but also I have someone very special on my show that I met. Uh, through some friends of mine. Uh, Wilbur Allen is his name. He is producer extraordinaire. Um, he has been a, an engineer on Air Force One. Okay, that's, that's one. That is one of his many things on his uh, resume that, you know, I mean, he just has so much stuff. He has so much part of his pedigree. Um, but he also provides content uh, to a ton of networks, um, and he has incredible photography. He uh, has some technology that is just beyond what we could possibly think of. That's what makes him so unique and in a class by himself. Um, and he's worked for almost every network, including uh, Discovery Channel, uh, Fox Network. I'm, I'm sure he could tell me history more and more. So, and history, yeah. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my guest because I want to get to everything he has to offer. Plus, we're going to see things on his website. So, and I know a lot of people saying, well, Alina, you always do fitness or you always do sports or something. Hey, my show is all about the hustle and everything in between. So, it's always going to feature people's hustle and all about the stuff that they do. Um, so, whether it's uh, in the sky, or whether it's extraterrestrials, whether it's UFOs, whether it's anything, we're always going to feature uh, the hustle, the human hustle, and what it takes to make it, what it takes, you know, to uh, contribute to our society, and that's what uh, my guest is doing, Wilbur Allen. Welcome. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> welcome to the hustle. <laughs> it is indeed a hustle. <laughs> It may be a hustle to get here now. <laughs> but you know what, though? We go, you know, obviously we're both from across the street. We That's Howard. So, uh, street, yes. you know, so we, we kind of have that in common. We know some of the same people. That's how we uh, got connected. So I'm definitely so excited to have you on here. It is about a subject matter that I never thought I would be involved in any capacity, which is why I was like, hmm, let me see. This might be kind of interesting just to open up my mind, open up the minds of my viewers, things like that, and just kind of get people really, really interested in the world. And that world that I'm speaking of is the world that you cur currently work in almost every day of your life. And that is, I, I want you to explain exactly what you do and what you're involved in. 
I, I want to um, speak for you. I, I, I'm glad you're not going to speak for me. Right. But, um, I, I got into this in an unusual way, by the way. My, my parents were U.S. military. Okay. And um, as a child, I was. And what does that mean? Like, where were you living? In England. Oh, you were a, in, in England. A U.S. military base in England. And okay. I woke okay. up one night to um, small extraterrestrials in silver spacesuits. They were the size of children. They looked like insects. They were extremely slim. Um, and what was interesting was when I tried to scream, I couldn't scream. And when I tried to run, my legs didn't work. And I but most people might say, as a youngster, that might have just been what, like a dream, right? Well, so what made you? What made what what convinced you that this was really something that happened to you and not a dream? Every base my parents were stationed at, these extraterrestrials would appear. Really, and it was constant. Okay. And now it's uh, apparent in my work when, especially with a particular anomaly that I'm constantly documenting, it's appearing mm. constantly. It's appearing constantly, constantly wherever you are. Wherever I go, and I did a job in the North Pole. And it okay. appeared in the North Pole. Okay. I did a job in Area 51. It appeared in Area 51. It appeared in Sedona. It appeared in so, Freeport. Okay, so when you say it, you mean what? It's a object which was initially documented by Grumman, okay. uh, 308, 1960. And if you Google that, you can it'll take you to a page okay. which is associated to that event. And okay. in 1960, they documented an object that was in our airspace, and they described it as an object that spanned from one state to the other. Mm. And it was luminous red when it appeared in their uh, visual acuity, when they, when they sighted it visually in 1960. But they didn't have the technology to actually document it as it is forensically. And I created that technology um, in, a modification of hyper, in a modification of Hubble technology. Of what kind of technology? Hubble, H-U-B-B-L-E. Oh, Hubble, Hubble technology. Hubble, okay, yes. Hubble technology. Okay, so the Hubble technology that you created is still, that's what you use currently today. The technology I created makes NASA's Hubble look Fred Flintstone. No way. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so what is the difference between your technology and, say, NASA's technology? NASA's Hubble is, if you're familiar with photography, is ISO 1600 in space, and it's limited to near IR, which is 350 nm, to normal vision. Okay. While the technology I created... And that gives you... I mean, just for people who are like me, infrared. who are just like, okay... Limited really? infrared. <laughs> limited. What, you see those you pictures of Hubble? See. You see those stars in multiple colors? Stars. That's Hubble technology. That's Hubble technology. Okay. And so you, yours will give you more clarity or can pinpoint it's, objects it is, better? It is, it is essentially, since it's 4K and we're talking about NASA's Hubble is an 8-bit or 16-bit technology, which is 8086 processors, which Windows, pre-Windows, while the technology I'm using is 64-bit in okay. 4K. Mm -hmm. and It shoots at 60 frames per second in 4K. So I'm shooting 60 frames per second mm. using what's called a hyperstar lens, which is a 900-millimeter lens at f2, and I'm getting objects that are not of this world in the samples that I'm getting. Really? Okay, so that, okay, just so we can kind of tie things up. So that very technology is what the networks call upon you all the time. They call to upon provide me the for, content. The, for the content because forensically speaking, few have samples which are forensic grade. All the samples I have are scientific grade okay. motion picture which is a total difference. And you look at the nature and the quality of my shows, mm -hmm. you see it specifically they're dealing with UFO technology or UFO imagery. The actual, UFO the, the imagery real deal. technology. Yes, the real deal. Okay, the yes. real deal. Okay. Okay, so we got all that piece taken care of. Now, just tell me, how is it that... Okay, so you're, you're a youngster, you're dealing with some of the issues, but then how does that... How do you get from you know, the extraterrestrial uh, connection to being the engineer. Just kind of take me through the engineer part of Air Force One and then all of a sudden you kind of, you know, taking your career to the next level and being on demand for to, these UFO videos. To get jobs like White House jobs and jobs on Air Force One and Marine One or Marine Two, right? you, you have to be screened. Yes, you do. Extensively. You do. And my, my parents, because of their background, and my, my father was military intelligence, which was oh. CIA, technically speaking. Um, mm -hmm. And with that background, I was um, not the type of person they would find um, 
not suitable for the job. Okay. Because they screen you for right. specifics. And very few people have access to the President of the United States and have access to Air Force One and Marine Two. And I did. And I worked with uh, three presidents what? directly, directly. No way. What yeah. three presidents did you work with? Um, <laughs> Ronald Reagan, okay. George Bush, okay. George H. Bush, and Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton. Okay. H.W. H. Bush, who just passed who away. Who just passed. Yes. Right, right. Okay. While he was wow. head of the CIA. Oh. So think about that. How do I get access to a president with that background? They had to see that I came from the same thing that he came from. So for yes. the sake of security, they knew that I would not be a security risk to the president of the United States. Okay. So as an engineer, exactly what did you do on Air Force One? Everything. Um, maintenance. Was it maintenance of the it, plane? It was was an, it, I, my background is aeronautics, but oh, I'm, it is I'm, also aeronautics. An, I'm okay. also an electrical engineer, which is gotcha. other, my other degrees. Okay. And chemistry is one of my other degrees also. I have multiple degrees from <laughs> You're just people a across the street. genius, buddy. Well, they, they don't recognize that, but they don't recognize <laughs> the data either. So that, that becomes the, uh, the issue of this, this overall discussion. Yeah. Right. But you, I mean, for our grading system, you're quite intelligent but go ahead Wilbur. It, would, so. it would be different yeah <laughs> to say the least but most of what i i'm doing photographically i picked up from the united states air force and since my parents were u.s air force um and uh, at this one particular base where i learned imaging development was at the cia film lab at clark air force base in the philippines really? so yeah i'm wow. i'm very okay. well trained scientifically for okay. more more likely to be more prone into being considered a scientist more than more right because that's what i see you as kind of like the scientist type. i just happen to but do production just, i know but you do production too um so okay so let's move from there to okay so you sent me a video over the weekend in that video there was a concentration of sedona Arizona. Why is Sedona so important to the U.S. military? Well, first, Sedona is Area 51 number two, because the sensors that I dealt with, well, we, we're talking specifically, I don't know if you've ever been to Area 51, but Area 51 no, is... No, I have no idea. What is Area 51? Area those 51 is an alien anything. base in Nevada, but they call it Groom Lake, which is supposed to be a test site. But what, okay, I, what I documented okay. in Area 51 were not human spacecraft we're not we're not human it's not human technology at all I mean, okay it was absolutely abstract and the objects that i just happened to encounter in area 51 just happened to start following me mm, i see i see okay so you believe personally wilbur that there are extraterrestrials that roam our world we they're just probably don't here in dc they, we just don't know that they're here, and the United States does not want to reveal that information because it would set off all kind of alarms and make us quite feel have more feelings of instability. Well, let's rectify. Or that. let's, let's okay. rectify because, okay. because I because I'm <laughs> because I'm gathering the data. Okay. You guys would not know, but I would know for a fact that based on the frequency of the events that I get, meaning right. repeating I mean, objects. This is incredible because I've never I've never dealt with people who have this kind of top, top secret information. And I've often wondered, is there really terrestrials in our existence? I mean, to think that maybe we might be the only being, I don't know if you would consider people in from other planets or I wherever. I guarantee you we're not. <laughs> God did not just make us. And it's even more compelling when you start dealing with antiquity, especially Egypt. And we're talking okay. megalithic construction. Megalithic construction meaning blocks that weigh 10 tons. How many humans do you know can do can... precise 10 ton blocks and cut them out of a mountain precisely? We don't have that technology now. So consider that advanced technology that did that couldn't possibly be from our, our origin. Aliens. Aliens built the pyramids. Oh, really? Oh, my god. They goodness. want okay. you to believe the Egyptians did, but that's misinformation. If you look at Egyptian hieroglyphs, you see multiple levels of people, giants, then they get smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. then the humans are like right down here. Right. The right. giants were the ones that built the pyramids, and they, they concealed that evidence. In the early 30s, the Smithsonian destroyed all evidence of giants. They destroyed it. They had it, and they destroyed it. Because they didn't but want why? you to believe. Why would they destroy that? Because, you know, the myths of giants, mm -hmm. they want you to think it's a myth. Right. But it is not. They were really giants. They were really giants. Going, real giants. 
David and Goliath. Goliath was a giant. Yeah. It's I in know. the Bible. It's in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The giants, they, they're concealing wow. all of that. Yeah. They're concealing the Anunnaki. They're concealing, you know, that, that there's a very strong possibility that we are an experiment. We're inevitably based on evolutionary scale. We did evolve from apes, and that is basically what they want all of us to believe. Mm -hmm. So if we are essentially apes, hybrid apes, then some kind of advanced gene splicing technology made us like as we are. And there's several genes which we have which they cannot identify. So there's things that we have to look at. That, that those genes yeah. are extraterrestrial. Okay, okay. So going back, because we got to bring it back so that people really, got, I really want people to get a full understanding of what it is that, um, you know, what it is that we're really discussing here. And so, okay, so bring us back though, Wilbur. So the government, knows that there are there are different beings that exist in our world yes okay? but and they have these test sites in parts of the world like sedona sedona Arizona. and nevada and nevada area 51 nevada okay so they have these test sites because why would they use that those areas to a, sedona you know? first of all if you've ever been there that orange hue that's associated to sedona okay is metal it's rusting metal so we have high iron high iron oxide concentrations in sedona okay so the associations to the uh, martian surface for example look just like like mars this is the object that was encountered by edgar mitchell during eva1 of apollo 14. And you okay see so it, this it just is, wait so go back so wait a minute this is what it, again it's just look at the object watch this okay is you this see, shot like, by you yes no. yes oh yes this was shot by watch, your camera watch. okay you see that object yes what would that object be it's a streak of light that streak of light here we go again uh-huh is approximately two or three aircraft carriers in length it's massive the samples that just went by were 20 millimeter frames 20 millimeters wide okay angle. wait what is this one though what's this image I can't uh, see. This is dark now. I don't know what this They're image is. Stars. Huh? Stars. Okay. These are stars. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I, well, I can't see because, can't because see the monitor either. is a little different. But yeah, the, all, okay. all the objects that I've, I've presented in all of my videos are all the streak of light. And um, it's, it's, okay. it's just so happens. We need to probably happens. go to another. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So this one is, which, which this is, is this, this one? Is, this is Sedona, Arizona still. This, this is, is from Sedona. Uncovering Aliens. And this object when I documented the footage, it oh, um, right there. it it materialized directly in front of me. I mean, watch, wow. see that it, it materializes, and people okay. were saying, "Oh, wait a minute, that's an extended exposure." No, it's not. No, it's not. What does that mean, extended exposure? Well, when you when you talk about photography and you're doing mm -hmm. motion picture, oh. for example, if you do okay. time lapse, if I take a one and a half second exposure, that would mean for one and a half seconds, the camera is shooting a frame. Right. And it's, you would see objects like a car or anything in motion mm -hmm. as streaks, while the samples that I'm generating now are 60 frames per second. So the frame rate indicates it can't possibly be associated to um, extended exposures, scientifically wow. speaking. So we had to do scrutinization uh, based on scientific data associated to motion pictures. So the motion pictures I'm presenting are not um, slow frames. Okay, so it's the, impossible at sixty frames per second. It's totally impossible. Okay, so the video that we just saw was time lapse. Was time lapse? Yes. Okay. And that was with our earlier technology that I was utilizing, and for the for the sake of photography, for people who are interested in doing uh, nocturnal cinematography or nocturnal yes. photography, for nocturnal photography, your cameras would have to be at least one hundred thousand ISO or better to do. Motion and picture. that means what? It that has, has to, be to be super sensitive to to less light. Okay. You you want to be able to. Because we're talking about how many miles up in the air. We're talking about looking at into space. Into space. With with hyperstar okay. technology, we're definitely looking into space, and with this particular technology at f two, I'm able to look into space with clarity and brightness. Versus, if you look at the samples from the old days. I mean, that's days, very clear. Oh, it's that's very 4K. clear. It's all four K technology. So we have. Oh. 4K examples, mm -hmm. which are forensically speaking, scientific grade. So it's a little different than that out of focus, fuzzy crap that they're showing in most of these shows. Yeah, like when they are showing, I mean, when we think of UFOs, we think of like the black and white videos. Like. No, that's, those days are gone. We're, we're talking now, we're into infrared and full color, full color night vision. Okay, 
Now, would the government ever want video like that from you? Well, it's interesting that you would say that they specifically. Well, own? they already have. They have. They have. Um, I share my data with NASA, so it's okay. not like um, I'm withholding anything. And, and I okay. keep in mind, I'm talking NASA science, which is NASA, yeah. the head of NASA. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not um, withholding anything. In fact, I try to bring them up to speed because if you look at the technology that's on board the ISS, Fred Flintstone. Oh, it's Fred Flint. It's old. Well, not okay. old. It's just it's antiquated. Not or? where it should be. Oh, not where it should be. When when, really? when you start looking at okay. the U.S. government and things, they they have this. For example, where uh, they just recently released U.S. Navy footage, FLIR, mm -hmm. of this UFO from the. Uh, 2007 2008 era and navy FLIR is 480p which is what's navy FLIR? that's a clear is forward forward looking infrared in, okay that, so that's like when you see predator drones what they use to do mm -hmm. night vision it's 480p technology mm. while the technology i'm using is 4k which is file sizes are massive in comparison wow Wow. Total is difference. there any other thing that you want us to see on the Well, no, they can, they can go to else? they can go to my website ufodc.com or they can google Grumman 308 1960 or Band of Light UFO 2 or Band of Light UFO and they can see the all all the same samples. They're all the same objects but right. in different locations. So forensically speaking, it's a comparative forensic analysis. So you have shot video where in the world? Everywhere including the North Pole. Really? You've yes. been to the North Pole? Yes. <laughs> Was there really? Well, How you'll long be surprised. You we stay stayed, we stayed we stayed for 6 days and you know, <gasps> it would be it was a 20-mile hike to this particular glacier which was called Mount Hayes which which was wow. indeed an alien base but they don't want people to know that. But at Mount That's Hayes That's an alien base inside the mountain. <laughs> inside the mountain in 1960 during the Soviet American satellite wars they were having putting satellites in space. Whenever a Soviet satellite went over Mount Hayes, it would go dead. And then it regained its connectivity when it went away from Mount Hayes. The same thing happened to all the American satellites around Mount Hayes. So whatever's in Mount Hayes put up an EM pulse that stopped whatever satellite technology they have from seeing it. And indeed, Mount Hayes, Alaska, is an alien base, just like Area 51, inside the mountain. And people went missing there. Does the government know this, though? Yes. They know this, but yes. they're not saying anything. What could possibly be? Well, no, because when you think about it, it's, it's kind of disturbing. When I was doing research here, for example, after I finished my job in Area 51, I set up shop here mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. on Logan Circle. Okay. It got creepy when the objects from Area 51 started showing up above the house. And what's in, even more interesting, Logan Circle is four blocks from the White House. And the trajectory of these objects, when they would appear, beeline to the White House. <laughs> you're scaring me Wilbur. <laughs> well no what's this, what the creepy part is when they appear is the African Americans that disappeared in Northeast simultaneously that's the creepy part about it and when I presented that to uh, Kathy Lanier who was my friend at the time she was the police chief yeah. initially they scoffed at it initially but when they sent the shrink to my house to look at the data and they didn't send a police officer they sent a shrink to my house Right. and I showed the shrink the data and the shrink became spooked and left. Wow. And wow. when she, they wow. thought I was lying when yeah. I said I was an I'm Air Force sure. One engineer, they were like, oh, he's lying. Oh, yeah, he's, he's go he's go put him in a straight jacket and lock him up immediately. Right. So I showed them my credentials immediately. So that totally dispelled with them thinking I was crazy. So right. the big guy with the muscles that had the straight jacket, when he, when he saw the samples, he was more spooked than the lady was. He was like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. I'm sure, but I mean, it's still something that we need to know more about and i feel like that maybe the movies of say et or star wars it's or something like down. that it's childish. it's it it comes i don't believe that it just came from somebody's creativity i think that there are well, they got that they've got that there's They're, some access to confidential files that we really don't there's soft, we don't have access to there's soft you know? toning things that are creepy you know, when you start talking about an extraterrestrial presence really in our airspace, come on, are, aliens yeah. are here. If, <laughs> if, they, if they know aliens are here, they're not going to respect the government anymore because yeah. it's totally destabilized, according to the Brookings Institute. Wow, this is crazy. Oh, my goodness. So I just want to welcome in Lawrence. Lawrence, um, my co-host extraordinaire. And uh, 
you know, my stat guy, and uh, he knows everything about the NFL, so we'll be talking about uh, the playoffs uh, when we get a chance. Oh, but um, I have a question. Lawrence, what, yeah, go right ahead. What did you Lawrence. say the ISO had to be to shoot? Night uh -huh. vision, mm -hmm. 100,000 ISO and better. The type of technology I'm using now is mm -hmm. 4 million ISO. 4 million. 4 million. <laughs> It's like you think like, you don't need no you don't need any lights anymore. It's like mm -hmm. I'm shooting in Haynes Point in absolute darkness and it looks like daylight. That's incredible. It's oh crazy. really? That's your that's your current technology. Yes. That you have. Which wow. You need to talk about that. Really? Well, yeah, for your for your applications. Yeah. Oh, you want me okay. to definitely use it on you. <laughs> I don't know if I want somebody seeing me in that kind of you, you know look, clarity. You will look. <laughs> Phenomenal, I guarantee you. Really? Yes. What? Wow. Now, is this technology that people can buy, or well, of is, course you, you, you get can get you stuff? can get a you can get a D5 Nikon. They're they're seven thousand bucks just for the body. Okay. Just for the body, but then you need about thirty forty thousand dollars in lenses. Wow. Five thousand oh dollars in memory cards. Oh my goodness. Twenty thousand dollars in software. What? It's that expensive to utilize I'm, this? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, in, I'm in motion picture production, so I'm using right. specifically Avid technology. Right. And okay. that is indeed the, the way to go if you're going to do motion pictures. If you're going to do motion pictures. So tell us what you're currently working on, and then just tell us the networks, because I know I, I probably, I know it's Discovery Channel. Uh, Discovery, oh. Country Music Channel. I was a cast member for my big redneck vacation. In fact, they were the ones who sent me to Area 51. It was supposed to have been a comedy. It turned out to be a close encounter. Okay. Um, what other other the networks? Weather Channel, which is NBC Weather Universal, Channel. all okay. the Discovery oh. networks. Okay. Uh, okay. A and E, which is the History Channel, and all the uh, high end network channels associated with History Channel. Okay. Um, and CBS News with Scott Pelley. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So you work for all of those places, and you always tell me, Alina, I provide content. So when you provide content, what does that mean? All the television shows, the current television shows, like Missing in Alaska, Uncovering Aliens, uh -huh. Twisted Believer, Tornado Alley, which is NBC Universal. Okay. My Big Redneck Vacation. The UFO okay. footage that they utilized for yes. those shows is mine. All that's your all of it. footage. Yes. Wow. Okay. So all these shows, and so what are you currently working on? Um, we, I just finished Missing in Alaska, which was on a and &E, and I'm going back to Discovery for um, a history-based UFO show, but I'm not sure if they're going to use me personally or just use my footage. But either way, it still uh, puts me out there. Right, right. It keeps you... Visible. You know, visible. Okay, so if people want to connect with you or want to find out more about your UFO, uh, you know, um, videos and all of your uh, photography, how should they reach you, Will? Um, well, you can, you can reach me. Um, I know your websites, but we got to say it again. Because well, ufodc.com, <laughs> but there's there's 30 chapters to ufodc.com, so you have to really go through it. When you click on pictures, it opens up a chapter. When it opens up the chapter, the pictures open up videos. So you have forensics okay. associated to those. Um, or they can go to my YouTube channel, which is Wilbur Allen YouTube. Or they can uh, Twitter me, uh, yes. UFOWGA at YouTube, or Twitter rather, I'm sorry. Right. Um, and Wilbur Allen at LinkedIn. And Wilbur Allen at LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. yes. Is there anything I'm missing? Because I want to make sure I get everything out that we talked about. <laughs> there isn't? Okay. <laughs> All right. So don't forget to go to Wilbur Allen. It's W-I-L-B-U-R-A-L-L-E-N. -L -L -E -N. But definitely Google <laughs> Grumman, 308-1960. Oh, okay, Grumman. <laughs> okay, so it's been great. I mean, spending today with you, just kind of learning. I've been oh, it's learning. It's different from sports, that's for sure. I mean, it's so different from sports. It is so, so different. I mean, you know, but hey, everybody has, you know, and I hate to say hustle because some people think that I mean, you know, something that is disingenuous and it's like not. Like some super fly hustle. Yeah, some super <laughs> fly hustle, you know. But I'm, you know, I always like uh, people who have a lot of heart and a lot of, um, uh, you know, go get it, you know, like me. So, <laughs> so that's Real people with faces you're talking about. To There's just too many fake people out there, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of fake stuff going on. So I wanted to be, you know, a show where I could be me and focus on the things 
that I love to talk about. Obviously, I love fitness. I love sports. I wear those hats um, and everything in between. I didn't want to be just completely focused on me and my ignorance. I wanted to be expanded and I wouldn't say I ignorance. Wanted That's not ignorance. To, it's curiosity. It's different. Uh, curiosity. So curiosity. Don't say ignorance. Yes. I mean, well, no, no, no. I'm, I don't mean ignorance in a negative way. It just means ignorance to the fact that I knowing. may not know exactly, that much but, about that industry. Um, so I definitely wanted to be, you know, to broaden my scope and my understanding of things and exposure. So, um, so that's really why, you know, I, uh, did the show. So, but I want to thank you so much for, thank you for coming me. here, showing us your extraterrestrial. I know that there's something going on. There's another world out there. It's creepy. And whether, you know, in my lifetime we see it or not, hey, but... I just know in my heart of hearts that there's something more going on besides, well, you know, it's a lot going on with the stars. Now that I've shown there. it to you now, if you do see something, you'll be aware of, of, yes. of what's exactly out there. I will definitely, definitely be aware. So, hey, don't go anywhere. When I come back, yes, I'm going to be talking with, uh, with uh, Lawrence, of course, all about the playoffs and my perspective on things and get his um, and we're also going to be talking about these new NFL rules uh, for overtime, which, anyway. <laughs> when it's controversy, when, when you look we, at it, when somebody makes a bad call, it's like, it's like, come on now. If the playback right? says, wait a minute, this, that does not look How like. How you missed that? I mean, That's good why they grief. had to do it. They had to do it. The fairness associated to it. That could have made, made the difference in winning and losing. Right? So mm -hmm. there should be, if there's any time you're going to recall or go to uh, instant replay, it's definitely when it can, you know, be uh, uh, in the midst but the of NFL whether it determines the, rules, the game or I mean, not. You know, they keep you modifying the rules. They, well, they need to modify these. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with that because they're evolving the well, sport. True, true. And you want to evolve that sport because that sport, I mean, it's like anything else. We need to evolve it. When we know better, we need to conduct ourselves better. And we do need to make it safer. Well, but brain I think injury it needs diseases to be safer that they have, for NFL players. For yeah. everybody, not just the quarterbacks, for mm -hmm. everybody. And yeah. now we also see that we need to adjust the rules that allow these teams so that they're not, I mean, think about the effort that it takes to get to where these players, these players are starting out in preseason, they work their butt off, right? Then they go into the season, they're working hard every week, then they make it all the way to the postseason, then they make it to the last round of the playoffs, and then they lose. And then they lose because, because, a, a, bad because a ref had his eyes looking the other way. We should have instant replay. We should ask for reviews on plays, especially when it comes down to a game that's on the line like that. We should be able to, and we should be able to do it in those last few minutes of a game as well, because that's the most critical, right? That's critical. I mean, yes, a lot of people saying, well, you know, it wasn't our fault that uh, Drew Brees threw an interception, you know, in overtime, but still. Um, this took away, and trust me, I'm, I'm a Rams fan. <laughs> so it's not like I'm, I'm up here saying all this because I'm not a, Ram, a Rams fan, but I'm just saying. But anyway, so when we get back from commercial, we are, uh, well, from a little break. <laughs> uh, we'll be talking with Lawrence and whoever else wants to join in on the conversation. We welcome you to stay, Wilbur, if you want. You know, we're going to be talking about sports, and I know you're not that crazy about sports. After I fell down a glacier, but. it's kind of hard for me to get into sports. You, know? <laughs> but we <laughs> you need to slide down a hole for miles and feel that. It's like, oh. No, I, I would dance we with you, but I can't. <laughs> we understand. We understand. But we're going to let Wilbur go, and then we're going to have some fun conversation coming up a the playoffs and who's gonna win the Super Bowl and all right we'll see you guys on the other side we'll be back
The Hustle. Yes, with Alina Seven right here at WLVS Radio, right here in our nation's capital across the street from uh, my school, my home, my neighborhood, my hood, where I grew up, <laughs> everything. Went to high school, college, right around this area. So it's just kind of interesting to me that um, it's gone full circle and I'm back to my neighborhood. So it uh, feels kind of great. But to also let, you know, some people were asking me, oh, but I thought you were from Massachusetts. I am originally from New Bedford, Massachusetts. That's where I, where I come from, okay? But I moved here to DC when I was about 14. So I've been here a long time. Uh, anyway, I have my co-host up here because we got a lot to take care of. It's been very kind of interesting. Uh, this whole weekend was, good grief, was it crazy, right, Lawrence? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was wild. It was just a wild games, um, you know, but of course, it kept me on the edge of my seat because I really didn't know who was going to win and who was, you know. And by the way, for the record, I know that people are like, who cares? But I kind of care that I call, I made at least one prediction correct. Mm -hmm. I knew the Rams were going to win. Didn't I say that last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, anyway, so I made that one prediction, but I did not call the Patriots to win. Uh, so I was wrong on that front. But hey, anyway, uh, so tell me, what do you think about the games, Lawrence, as well as anybody else who wants to talk about it? Were you, were you mm -hmm. guys talking to me about it last week, too? Did y'all call? Who did y'all call? Did y'all call the Rams? You said, oh, you said the Rams. I knew somebody. I was like, somebody made the call that was correct. It was you. Okay. It's part of, hey, just to let y'all know, there's a show that comes up right after me called We The Shit. And those guys are always right here in, uh, you know, part of like in front of me. So I don't want you guys to feel like I'm talking to like nobody. I swear to God. <laughs> They're these guys that have this great show after me, so I always kind of interact with them. Hopefully they don't mind. Do y'all mind that I interact with y'all and ask y'all questions? Okay, cool. All right, so they call, what's your name? Lee. What is it? Lee. Lee. Oh, well, that's my nickname. Okay, so that's what my family calls me, Lee. Okay, so I won't forget your name. So Lee called Rams Patriots. What'd you call it? You called that too? I called Rams Chief. Oh, you said Rams Chief. Okay, okay. And what's your name? Damien. Damien. Okay, so Damien called Rams, Rams Chiefs and uh, Lee called Rams Patriots. So, all right, cool. He got it then. He made all the predictions correct. So what you guys, what everybody, what do you guys think about the game, the first one? Let's just tackle the first one, then we'll tackle the second one. <laughs> so let's deal with the, uh, what was the first? The first one was um, the Rams and Chiefs, right? Rams Saints. I mean, Rams uh, Saints, right. What did you guys think about uh, that game? Great. It was great? It was great. I thought I thought it was I thought the game went <laughs> What'd you say? One bad call. <laughs> <laughs> One bad decision. No, but that was a really bad call. No, that was that was really. Well, it was a bad no call. <laughs> it was a bad no call. Exactly, exactly. What'd you think, Lawrence? Yeah, I, well, my opinion on refereeing, I think in my lifetime as far as I'm watching football, I think there's been only three bad calls that affected the game. Because mm -hmm. when people blame, they always blame referees for everything. But I think there's only been three games that, that, that tuck rule against – the Patriots and the Raiders, uh, the Seahawks and Packers game that Monday night, and probably this past weekend is probably one of the worst no calls I've seen. And I'm and I'm, was, I'm looking at it at different angles. And I'm seeing how how could, how could you get away with it. I mean, maybe it wasn't catchable or, or what, but it's, there's no way around it. That but I still can't find where was maybe you guys, maybe Lee or Damien can tell me this too. Where was the referee? And just to remind everybody what we're talking about, we're talking about under two minutes in the game, correct? In mm -hmm. regulation of the game, Coleman commits a blatant pass interference to prevent the Saints, Tommy Lee, right, Lewis, from scoring. And the Saints were held to a field goal and went on to lose in overtime, right, to the Rams. But, you know, and then also they missed the uh, pass interference 
on that play as well as uh, it was helmet to helmet. And then I believe something else happened right before that too. There was something, somebody was saying um, something happened right before that too or something on that play. Uh, I'm not sure, I gotta look it up and see. Um, but anyway, so where was the ref though? I don't understand, how did he not see that? Because that was not just, that wasn't just like, you know what I mean? Like that ridiculous ass, uh, uh, what was they called, roughing the passer mm -hmm. <laughs> on Brady, where it would just grazed his, his helmet. This is like kaboom! I mean, he just like, he took him out the air. Did you see that hit? Was, I was like, how do you, how you miss that though? I mean, what you on crack? I mean, what, what could you, I mean, why did you miss that? Does know. anyone know where the ref was at that time? I'm just thinking maybe they're holding his family hostage or something. Maybe, maybe they I mean, didn't cover the spread or something. I don't, I can't. Yes. With that same ref? Is he an older ref or is he, can he not see? Oh, oh my goodness. Wait a minute. Okay, so Damien is basically saying that there are, yeah, Damien is basically saying that there is a particular ref that go ahead Jamie I'll let you speak again go ahead because you want you might now so go ahead <laughs> that uh that particular ref I think I want to say it was Thursday they did a petition got like seven three to seven thousand signatures to have him taken out because every game he's played at yeah that he's ref the Rams have lost and I'm thinking maybe he did like a little makeup because of the seven losses maybe he turned a blind eye mm -hmm. but then again the ref is supposed to be looking at the quarterback the whole time, you know, so they don't necessarily follow the ball. He's looking to make sure he doesn't get hit too late. But that doesn't count for the umpires and the back judges because somebody should have been following the ball. That's what I'm saying. I was getting ready to say there's some refs that are supposed to follow the ball. But you know, the funny thing is he, right? he argued with another ref after that call. There's another ref that ran up to him. And I don't know what they talked about, but... Oh, right after There's that. There was another rant. Sean Payton, ran up Sean to Payton gave him the third degree right after that. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't know what the conversation was, but. Oh, wow. He, he, he stood by whatever. whatever what? Made, so. Wow. But wow. the commissioner does, there's a certain rule that he can have them replay the game or award the Rams the, the, the victory, which I doubt he would do, but there is a stipulation. There where is he a stipulation. Yeah, I heard that too, but the commissioner would have to do that, right? He would yeah. have to approve Only that. Only he could do that. Only he can do that. Yeah, he, he, um, mm -mm, that ain't happening. <laughs> I don't see that happening. But I just feel so bad for the Saints, right? Two years in a row, remember? Minnesota Vikings. Uh, well, well, that was their fault last year. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, when you say it was their fault, you can take the mic, guys, or any one of you guys can walk over here if you want to be on camera. I am not, you know. Feel free to walk over here, whatever. I'm like real chill, so you know. <laughs> okay, after that play. Okay, after correct, that play. I, I got. I'm gonna say five things. Okay. After that play, did the Saints kick a field goal? After that one play. After the yes. play, the Saints kicked the field goal, right? Right. So now they're up three points, right? Yes. With less than was about a. Tied no, it. No, they kicked the field goal to go up three. 20. And it was under twenty. It was under two minutes to go. Okay. Maybe about a minute and twenty seconds. Yep. So they up by three. All they got to do is stop, stop the Rams from scoring, right? Mm -hmm. And let the Rams score, tie the game. That's up hard. To go into overtime. To right? go into overtime and so that's then Drew Brees. Two. Number three. Then right. the Saints get the ball. Yes. The first. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Drew Brees threw. Then they have a chance to score a touchdown to end the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Drew Brees throw an interception. Yep. yep. Then they have the Rams in their own territory. Can they stop them from scoring? Yes. So after that play, there they were... had five, I just named five opportunities where the Saints could have ended the game and they didn't. I'll they give still you... want to cry over that little no call. But, I, but get Lee, over. I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more. Why is Drew Brees throwing the ball to Lewis? 
when they're they're close to the you know they're right there in the red zone. Why, is he Why was he even throwing Kamari it? Why running, not just pass it and use up the, the running clock? back? Kamari is running all over him. Why are you throwing the ball? Why are you throwing the ball? That was the other thing that Sean Payton tends to do. He throws the ball. He's too throw happy. What do you think about that? Exactly. You know, you agree with that too? How about you, Lawrence? Yeah. You I agree? mean, well, that's that's I agree with that's his philosophy. There's a lot of coaches are real hard headed about he uses the run to open up the his passing. So that that's just Payton being Payton. Okay, so do you feel that they should change the calls in overtime? Do you mm. feel that they should be able to review calls, okay? Especially when it comes down to maybe the last two to four minutes of the game in overtime. Don't you think that they should be able to review those calls? Because that's when the game is on the line the most. And I would hate for somebody to lose simply because, A, if we go back to the Patriots game, okay, on a coin toss, mm -hmm. right, the Chiefs lose because they simply picked – it came down to heads or tails, right? That wasn't fair. Well, they still got to stop them. <laughs> no, I understand that, but look at – I'm sorry to cut y'all. Okay, uh, that overtime, that one play where they said the dude hit Brady in the uh, – they uh, was a rough in the passer. And yeah, the rough in him. the passer call. He didn't touch his face. He, he, he rushed, <laughs> he the rushed him. He rushed him. Yeah, it's like he no, did like Oh, that. you said the space. He didn't touch. He didn't – because they say he, you can't call for an, um, Brady or you're going to get a 15-yarder. You can't touch Brady. You can't touch Brady because he's the poster child. But <laughs> – that that, but the Chiefs here again. He made a good point with the Saints. Huh? The Chiefs should have won the game when they intercepted it, but the dude was all sides. And I mean, but who? How do you? I mean, first of all, that was a rookie mistake. That guy is not a rookie. He should have known better to line up properly against the line of scrimmage. So I'm like, dude, how do you do that? I mean, a that was like so crazy. But at the same time, that didn't affect play. I didn't understand. How do you call that little small minute and then the call on Brady? But y'all missed the big chop your head off pass interference. I mean, how do you? You're not. You're know. inconsistent as a league, though. That's what I'm saying. It's inconsistent, and because of that, to me, that makes more sense to have reviewable calls because it's too inconsistent with the refs. Now, I, I I've always agreed that they should right? um, review those pass interference calls for the longest time. And I hate when people say, "Well, those are the breaks of the NFL." No, those shouldn't be the breaks of the NFL because you can't tell me that people who have worked their ass off all year long should be subjected to a, a coin toss determining whether they win or lose a game. It's no different. Okay, take for instance this. In baseball, both teams get up even if it's gone into overtime, correct? correct. Do both teams get up for top, of the, top of the inning and bottom of the inning, correct? We give each team an opportunity. Whoever scores, right, the most wins the game, correct? In basketball, in overtime, you get a certain amount of time, right? Both teams, you get to see both defense and offenses, correct? Mm -hmm. Why is it that the NFL is, I mean, I don't know if they're the only sport, because I didn't look this up, but why do they seem to, like, feel that a coin toss is just appropriate for overtime? Oh, so you're saying safety reasons, that's why they make it whoever score a sudden death kind of situation, and then that's it. Or Nobody. Touchdown. Yeah, because, you know, if they both score field goals, the next one wins, but, you know, people want to score 15 minutes, somebody can get seriously hurt. And you talk about they playing for 60 minutes in that particular weather, mm -hmm. it could be a safety issue. Mm -hmm. I feel if one team scores, the other team should have the opportunity to try to play like they do in college. 
Right, like they do in college. And some people are saying, well, that's a college rule. I just think it's a rule that should be applicable to the pro league. And if it's being used in the college league, the collegiate league, so be it. What is the big deal that it needs to be just a college? Well, that's a college rule that doesn't belong in the pros. I think that it should be even on the pro level, too. It's just a rule that's applicable. And I think that coaches should be given the opportunity to ask for a review, especially when it's a it's a play, it's some action that took part on the on the field that will affect the outcome of the game, you know. And all and all the time, judgment will always come down to it as well. We understand that. So, what do you guys think? Did Edelman hit touch that ball or not? Did he touch it with his thumb? It looked like he touched it with his left hand. It looked like it from one angle, but the other angle looked like. Well, it's, they couldn't prove they touched it because the trajectory of the ball didn't change. So right. you can't really see in the replay if, if it was touched. That's yeah. the thing about it. So, I mean, it might have touched them, might have, but they can't really tell. So they can't, they have to, they have wow. to see the ball. But they, I, what I, they look for is the, to, in those cases is the tra trajectory. Yeah. That the ball changes motion. This was this will go down in history, right? Because this is the only time two champion NFC AFC championship teams went into overtime in the uh, playoffs elimination game. So I mean that's an incredible stat, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I would have wanted to have seen Mahomes go up against uh, the Patriots in overtime. I think that I was robbed of that as a fan, um, and I would have liked to have seen the Patriots' defense against them in overtime as well. And I feel like I was robbed of that too. But nonetheless, hey guys, it's been so much fun. All right, who we got for Super Bowl? Calling it now. What's up? Come on, Damian Lee, everybody. Lawrence, who you got? I'm Patriots not, or the Rams? I'm not betting against the Patriots. I can't. <laughs> I just can't. I'm still sticking with the Rams. You still sticking Rams. All right. Damian says Rams. Lee, who you got? Rams. Uh-oh. I think we have converted some people into Rams fans. <laughs> I don't – I can't – what would you say? The Ghost going to win. The Ghost going to win. All right. Who you got, Lawrence? The Patriots. The Patriots. Okay. All right. We only got one person saying the Patriots. Even I'm saying the Rams. <laughs> I don't know. I can't vote. I can't go against Sean McVay. I just think he is uh, – he is very, very determined. There is a strong determination about his character. Uh, that will go up against Belichick's determination real good. So I think it's going to be an exciting game. Um, hey, everybody, it's been a lot of fun today. Thank you to Wilbur Allen, my guest here today. It's been fun learning all about the, the UFO world, <laughs> science and technology. Um, so thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, Damien. Thanks, Lee. And don't forget, you guys, tune in. It's a great show after me called We the shit yes <laughs> they're coming up directly up after me the hustle so what better show to come up after me is called we the shit to continue on the hustle right here at wlvs radio it's alina seven don't forget go to alina seven.com if you want to see more about me anyway or follow me on social media i'm everywhere okay i'll holler at you guys see you all next week tuesday 6 p.m I'll see you guys next week. Bye.